Now, a little bit about me. I'm a photographer. <laughs> I've been a photographer for a long time. I think I'm like the oldest presenter here, which is actually kind of cool. Anyway, up here you see my first camera, a box camera that I used in the early 1960s. My dad gave it to me. Today I use top-of-the-line digital SLRs. So I've been doing this for a very long time. And during that long time, I've met a lot of artists. These are some artists that live on my block or in my town. Eddie Fleming, a wonderful painter. Jamie Sias, a wonderful sculptor. Chuck Pierce, great guitar player. And Joy Henderson, she does a lot of things with shells. They're all artists. And all of these artists share a common bond. They need to get inspired. They need to get motivated. How else are you gonna create art? This is what I feel we have to do. <laughs> I took this picture on the way over here today. This is a Jimi Hendrix quote. I love it. Imagination is the key to my lyrics. The rest is painted with a little science fiction. You know, I think I know where he got some of his, his inspiration. So he had his own little list of how to get motivated and how to stay inspired. But I put together, <laughs> I put together my own list, again, for all creatives on how you can get motivated and stay inspired. And you see them up on the screen. And they are steal, share, search, join, learn, change, travel, enjoy, look, and walk. Now, a common thread, a common thread that all of you will see throughout this presentation, going back to all of these if I can, each one of these has kind of like a sub-element here, and it's experimenting. And this is what we have to do as creatives. We have to experiment, whether we're painting, whether we're taking pictures, whether we're playing guitar. We have to experiment. This is how we're going to find new stuff. And this is what I think is really cool about being an artist. So we're going to go through, go through these a little slower. Number one, steal. Now, some people around the world may be watching this and say, Rick Salmon's up there talking about stealing? Well, a wonderful book came out a few years ago. It's called Steal Like an Artist. And in that book, there's a wonderful quote. It's by Salvador Dali. And the quote is, those who do not want to imitate anything produce nothing. <laughs> So I love this quote, because this is how we can learn, by borrowing, not really stealing. You know, if, if the author said, you know, you know, borrow stuff from the artist, it probably would not have been a number one bestseller on the list. So as a photographer, what I try to do is I try to emulate, I try to copy. Maybe I try to steal a little bit too. I try to steal some of the work of the masters. Vermeer's painting, The Girl with the Pearl Earring. I wanted to copy that, <clears throat> so I worked on the lighting. I wanted to get that beautiful side. I think this is falling off again, guys. Uh, this beautiful side lighting. I also wanted to get the catch light right in her eyes. I did this uh, little project, Finding Frida. I tried to copy a Frida Kahlo poster. I learned a lot about lighting, but I also learned about the importance of props. Props are very important. Here's my neighbor Jay up here actually the husband of Eddie Fleming, the painter that you saw before, I wanted to recreate a Rembrandt. I learned about lighting. I learned about props. Renoir's girl combing her hair. What I did here is I really wanted to replicate the lighting. So in Photoshop, what I did, I used my burn tool to lighten the hair. And you see the highlights in Renoir's painting and the highlights in mine. So this is, how, this is what I'm talking about when I say steal like an artist. I play guitar. I try to steal guitar solos. Not so successful on it anymore, but this is how we can learn. So I'm really encouraging all of you in this room, all of you online, to steal like an artist. It's a great way to grow. It's a great way to learn. Number two, share. Sharing your work, my friends. My friends, it's so important to go out there and share your work. I spend a lot of time, a lot of time, maybe two hours a day on social media. It used to be publish or perish. Again, I've been around a long time. I used to I write a lot of books. I used to write a lot of magazine articles. Today is socialize or succumb. This is very important. We have to get our work out there. And I share on all the social media channels because it's a great way to get feedback, to get advice, to get input. A great way to get motivated. A great way to get inspired. I'm going to share with you <coughs> my favorite 
my favorite uh, example of why, of why it's so important to get your work out there. Several years ago, I'm working on a project on butterflies, on this butterfly book, and it's an international project. I'm working hard, I'm traveling around the country, taking pictures of butterflies and actually moths. So my wife, Susan, <coughs> says to me, could you put some pictures in the local exhibit? And I said, well, I'm really busy working on this uh, international project. You know, if I do it, I have to make an archival frame, an archival print, an archival mat, like all this stuff. I said, you know, I'm really busy. She used the magic word, which is? Please. please, that's right. She used the magic word, please. So I did it. So I put two pictures, a picture that you see on the back of the book and on the cover of the book, in the local exhibit, which is the basement, the musty basement of the Unitarian Church. So a woman comes and she writes about my pictures in the local paper. You know, it's like a 75 cent paper that has the crime blotter in there the, uh, and the local sports and all that stuff. So this is what she says about my pictures in the local paper. And I use the quote on the back of my book. For their incisive vision, sumptuous textures and colors, and the sheer wonder these finely detailed descriptions of butterflies awaken in us, I think Rick Salmon's photographs are marvels. Pretty nice, right? <laughs> well, after the exhibit, I bring the pictures to her house. I thank her. She makes me some tea. I say, by the way, what do you do? Here's her name, and this is what she did. <laughs> Maria Morris Hamburg, curator of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, New York. Pretty cool, right? So this is why, you never know who's watching. You have to get your work out there. This is how you can get discovered. This is a great way to share, a great way to get motivated, a great way to get inspired. I'd like to share this with you right now. When you're sharing, the Professional Photographers Association, the PPA, provides 12 guidelines for judging a photograph. Now, when you're looking at these, Realize that a lot of these can be applied to different types of art. And I've, uh, I've highlighted in blue the ones that can really be applied to any type of art. And it's impact, creativity, style, composition, print presentation, really only goes for photography, center of interest, lighting, subject matter, color balance, technical ex excellence, excellence, technique, and storytelling. Everyone in this room is a photographer. I assume you are all storytellers. So these really can be applied to all different types of art. But I ask, I'm asking you guys in the room, what's missing? Because you can't ask really on the web right now. What's missing? You know, what can be added? Well, here's what I think it is. I think it's emotion. This is really what makes a good picture to you, what makes a picture important to you. And the emotion, this is what we have to strive for as artists. In a guitar solo, it's the emotion. In a movie, it's the scene, it's the lighting, it's all this stuff. The emotion is so important. And I think if you can take a picture that has an emotional connection with the subject, I think you're, you hit it, you hit it. That is the goal of photograph, taking a photograph. So here's the question, my friends. Can we have an emotional contact with like a floating piece of frozen ice on the water? And I think so, because looking at this picture, I'm sure some people in the room and around the world say, man, I really love to be in this glacial lagoon up in Iceland. And that's what we wanna do with our art. We wanna establish that emotional connection. I was on safari in Africa. I think I established an emotional connection with this big cat, but I'm really glad he didn't uh, establish one with me because I think he would have like jumped into the safari vehicle and, and gotten me. But you could see the emotion here. I took this picture at exactly the moment when the big cat was looking right in my eyes. So that emotional is, imp is very, very important. So when you're out there, Shoot with the three, what I call the three Ps, the passion, the purpose, and the persistence. And if you do that, and if you don't give up, you'll get that emotional connection. I call this picture, you know, motherly love, taken in one morning early, one early morning, and then Masai Mara. And Keith Richards agrees, guitar player for the Rolling Stone. I read this article, he says, feel the music. He's not talking about what keys in, what notes he's playing. He just wants guitar players and musicians to feel the music. So as, as a photographer, as a painter, you want to create that emotion. You want people to feel something when they look at your art. Number three, search. Do a search on other photographers and artists. You'll learn a lot from them. <coughs> Do a search on musicians. I saw Santana in 1969 
up at Woodstock. He was amazing. Now he's in the AARP bulletin, <laughs> which, I, <laughs> which I think is kind of funny, but I read this quote, roar against fear and make it disappear. It's a very good quote from Carlos Santana, who's in the AARP bulletin. Number four, number four, join. Join online communities. You can learn so much. You can learn so much from being part of community. Learn from others and get comments on your work. You know, there are many different types of artists, as I said here. You know, you could join these online communities. My wife, she has these beautiful gardens. She may not feel like she's an artist, but she's an artist. So you join these online communities. This is a great way to learn. Join local communities. You know, me, I'm a musician too, as I told you. I joined this band with these kids. Let me tell you, talk about inspiration. Talk about motivation. <laughs> If you're part of a community, if you play with others, you know, you're not out there by yourself. And that's really one thing I would like everyone in this room to feel, you know, and everyone around the world thinking that you're not, uh, you're not alone and you have to really share and share alike, very important. Number five, halfway through already. Number five, learn. Learning is so important. And this is one thing that I really like to talk about the most when I travel around the world talking. Yes, I talk about you know, the technical aspects of all this stuff, but learning is the most important thing and the most, thing, the, the, uh, the most fun thing I like to talk about. Here's a picture of me up in Iceland photographing what looks like a pretty boring scene, right? Piece of ice on the water on an overcast day. You know, kind of boring. But that's not the picture that I saw in my mind's eye. This is the original picture. And this is what we have to do as artists. We have to realize where we're going, no matter what type of art we're involved in. We have to think about what's gonna be, what's gonna be the end result. Just like when you get in the car, you have to know where you're going, otherwise how are you going to get there? So from that boring picture, this is the picture that I envisioned in my mind's eye. This really dramatic picture that showed the power of the waves, that showed the beauty of the ice. And if you see the picture side by side, the original's kind of boring down at the bottom. But with a little Photoshop work, a little camera techniques, uh, te technique, I was able to get the kind of shot that I wanted. So the Buddhists say, Learning is health, and learning is creative. And what's one of the cool things about photography, and I really believe we have never lived in a more exciting time to be a photographer than right now, although Ansel Adams probably uh, said that also, we can really create our own reality, whether it's with photography, with music, with painting, you know, with sculpture, whatever. We can create our own reality. We can escape from one reality and go into another one. <clears throat> you know, I'm big on quotes. I love this one. Reality leaves a lot to the imagination. <laughs> it's pretty cool because, you know, we can create our own reality. You look at this picture here. I took it up on the Oregon coast here. Pretty boring scene. You see the scene on the right there, but I created my own reality in the digital darkroom. So how do we learn? How do we learn everything you know, in our cameras? How do we learn everything in Photoshop and Lightroom and the plugins? How do we learn, like I'm a, I'm a musician, how do you learn all this stuff? Well, how do you learn to be a painter? I'm not a painter, but I can create painterly type pictures. Well, I think Anne Lamont has the answer. And I really recommend that you guys read this book. It's called Bird by Bird. And she talks about that you have to learn things one thing at a time. Daniel Goldman has a great book out, Emotional Intelligence. And what he talks about in this book is how emotional intelligence can be more important than having a higher IQ. So you really have to know all this stuff uh, when you're working on your art. So I'd like to talk about the four levels of learning from Gordon Training International. Everyone in this room was at, will be at one of these levels. The first level, the unconscious incompetence. We don't know we're not good. <laughs> we get a camera and we think we're good. Number two, the conscious incompetence. We know we need help. So when we see a picture like this, we could turn it into a work of art like that. Number three, the conscious competence. We know we're good. And this is a good level, but the fourth level is really the best level. When you take a shot, when you just know it's good, and the only way to get there, the only way to get there is by practicing. Setting goals is very important. I was teaching a workshop in Mongolia, 
We set the goal to get the shot of, all the, of the horse with all the hooves off the ground. So no matter what area of interest you have, if you're a painter, look at this. This is an article I found just a couple of days ago, six things to decide before you start to paint, how to construct a guitar solo. We have to envision the end result. So when we see a shot like this, when we see a scene like this, sorry, we could turn it into a scene like this if we envision the end result. So we learn, my friends, we learn by experimenting. Number six, change. <laughs> I figure if change is good enough for crawling sack of goo, it's good for all of us, right? It, uh, it's true, I love this quote, when you're through changing, you're through. As an artist, you have to change, you have to grow. If you get stuck, think about this quote, you don't drown by falling in water, you only drown if you stay there. It's very true, a lot of people feel stuck. I love this quote, it's never too late to be who you could have been. I bet half the photographers here didn't start out, including myself, didn't start out life as a photographer, they did something else. And I think Real Magic by Dr. Wayne Dyer kind of sums this up, that we really have to, we really have to believe in ourselves. And I love this quote, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can, you can't. <laughs> if you think you can't, you can't. So <clears throat> you have to believe in yourself, and Henry Ford actually said it better. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. <laughs> so we really do, my friends, have to believe in yourself. And you never mistake motion for action. A lot of people are busy, but they don't get anywhere. So focus, focus, and my, if, my guess is if you focus and work hard, you'll achieve your goals. Never give up. I have a series of uh, 3D uh, children's books, National Geographic rejected this, this series. <coughs> Two weeks later, I signed a contract for six books, six 3D books with a nature company. They sent us around the world taking pictures to Tahiti, to Bonaire, to Africa. If I'd given up, I would have had no 3D books. Think about this quote. A tortoise travels only when it sticks out its neck. You have to take chances. You have to travel. So I traveled to Mongolia, I traveled to Africa, but I also travel locally to the New Croton Dam where I take all these pictures at different times of day, at different times of the year. So <clears throat> if you want to learn about art, travel to museums. If you're a musician, travel to concerts. Number eight, I see the time's running out, so I'm going to speed this up a little, even faster <laughs> than it is. Number eight, enjoy. You have to make it fun for your subjects. <clears throat> I wanted to photograph these Maasai uh, in Kenya, but I just can't go into the village and start shooting. I have to make it fun for them. <laughs> I went to a concert, Chick Corea. He made it so much fun for the audience, so we have to respect the audience. Number nine, look. There's a big difference between looking and seeing and hearing and listening. Here's just one quick example. You go to this uh, geyser in in Iceland, pretty boring scene if you, just, if you just see it, but when you start to look, you might see what's going on behind. So this is what artists do. They focus on a particular area of a scene and they say, how do I want to represent the scene? What do I want to do? Okay, the last one. The last one is walk. This is so important. We're so busy with our iPhones, with texting and all this other stuff, we have to slow down. And why? Because if we slow down, we could actually do something that's very important for all creatives, and that's to think. You've heard a lot of quotes during this presentation. I love this one. Angel whispers, angels whisper to a man who goes for, his walk, goes for a walk. This is why I have 36 books, because I go out there and I have all these ideas while I'm walking, actually without a camera. So I'll leave you with this one. Walking, thinking, and reflecting is a great way to, that's right, the title of this presentation, get motivated and stay inspired. Thank you so much, you're a great audience, and if you want to keep in touch, it's just ricksalmon.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you.